So I'm going to talk about kind of the state of writable gateways, looking at what's built into GoIPFS, how it relates to um, what, what's built into Kubo, sorry, how it relates to readable gateways, um, cloud things like web free storage, and also some of the stuff that I played around with in Agrigor to make it viable for web apps. So for readable gateways, um, we have the spec now, which is really great in that um, you know I can see the spec and I can see what's available there and there's some stuff I didn't know existed, which is cool. But generally, you know, we're resolving IPFS CIDs to some files or some sort of data. We might be getting ranges out of it, some other um, niceties. And similarly, we'll, we're resolving IPNS and kind of seamlessly doing that pathing. As well, recently, it seems uh, downloading car files, which are entire blocks of data, is very popular. And uh, we've also got directory listing, which I think should be a bit more controversial, but that's probably a whole other thing. And so we get all of this for free in Go, which is nice. Um, and what's cool is in Kubo, we also get writable gateways built in, which I think hasn't been talked about too much, but it's actually really usable. You can post some data to slash IPFS if you have the flag enabled, and then get back a path with a CID to the new data. Or if you have an existing folder structure that you want to append some more data to, you can do a put, again, to a CID and a subpath, and you can add a file to it. Similarly, if you have an existing folder, you can delete it. So this is useful if you are doing really basic read and writes. So if you're trying to upload an individual file, or if you're trying to delete an individual file or doing things one at a time, um, it works great. But if you're trying to do something more advanced, like uploading a whole bunch of files or a bunch of data, or you really care about verifiability a bit more, um, it doesn't really give you anything out of the box. So uh, kind of the next big thing in writable gateways that I'm seeing is car files, where now rather than leaving more of the IPFS tree generation code in the gateway, we're now having slightly more intelligent clients, which will be assembling all of the data into a car file client side. Um, I didn't know it's sounded for co content archives until recently. I was just like, okay, it's a car file. Let's just take the name. <laughs> but you know, generally it's nice. You have a bunch of data, put it into a single file, then upload it to web3.storage. And I think you get back the root CID, or I guess you yeah. pre-computed it yeah. as well. Because you, you created the whole tree already. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's really great in that it gives you more power, but it also means that you have to have a lot more code client side for dealing with the encodings and all of that stuff, which usually isn't a problem. And once you have customers, somebody will have situations. Like I was just talking to somebody that they were like, can't you do this or that? And they were like, it's not our machine, it's our customer's machine, and they can only run Python, and they can't shell out, and they won't do anything but send you a file. <laughs> That's so like, okay, I guess we have to do that. Like, That's really useful insight. Yeah. And also the thing that makes it easier to not need a car file, but also not just do single files is form data. So a lot, um, you know, the web has been dealing with file uploads for, you know, a little while. And there's a standard for that called multi-part form data, where in your request, you encode a stream of files and upload it all at once. And in the browser, we have APIs that make it really easy to use. So there's the form data JavaScript global, where you can append references to files. What's cool here is those files can be either file objects or blobs, or I think you went date arrays. Um, but what this means is that data is streamed. So you don't have to load all of your data in memory ahead of time and process it. If what you can do is you can show a user, give me your file upload dialog, choose whatever files you want, and then add them directly to the form data thing. And then similarly, you can post that to IPFS. At the moment, Kubo doesn't support form data. Web3.storage does. And we support it in Agrigore for uploading um, files. However, form data is also not perfect because it doesn't support uh, subfolders, which absolutely sucks. If you try to 
upload, um, say like uh, if you look in the API example here, when you append a file to the form, you give it an arbitrary name. I think usually the name matters for the HTTP server you're talking about. The reference to the data itself and optionally a file name for how that file will be identified. So oftentimes that file name is a hint to the server to know um, what to name that file to be uploaded or generate the mime type or whatever else. However, that file name, if you try to include a slash, it'll just kind of like ignore it and pretend it doesn't exist. So I think in the browser, they strip it out. If you have like a more low level HTTP API, like if you're doing raw curl requests, you might be able to fudge it, but generally the standard doesn't really allow for subfolders. So. <laughs> Yeah, I think as well, uh, URL encoding is a really big part of the web stack where I think the slash could be encoded with that. That's a really great idea. And that's probably something that gateways should standardize on because subfolders are necessary. Yeah. Uh, I may be wrong, but I think if I have like IPFS like passwords, if I can use that, it's not necessarily a folder. Pardon? I think a file. <laughs> Like, um, like, 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 the name can be a slash. Like, they can just slash in the name. It's not necessarily a separate example. Oh, yeah. Like, in the actual DAG representation, yeah, it can be a slash. Like, like, example slash, how in Bob can be a <laughs> Okay, you should come to the IPLD thing I'm doing directly after this in some other room that I don't know. But I'm actually going to talk about um, uh, escaping raw IPLD paths that can not play nice with file systems. But if I may get back to this, um, you know, form data is useful in that it means clients can be a lot lighter and we don't need to generate the entire DAG in memory and do all of that processing. If you have an HTTP library, which most environments do, you can probably upload um, a bunch of files. So the next thing that I think is really important for writable gateways is IPNS. I didn't know that Web3 Storage had that IPNS thing earlier, so that's actually amazing. But IPNS or some sort of mutability is just so key for this ecosystem. Like, I don't know if I can stress it enough, because especially if you're looking at doing something actually peer-to-peer -peer where you're not relying on a third party to do your mutability, then you need some peer-to-peer -peer way of sending those updates out. And IPNS is great in that we have it, there's room for improvement, but it gives you a way to update data sets. And so it's similar to how we can use IPFS. We can either post some data to an IPFS, sorry, IPNS public key. We post a CID that can update the record and publish it for us. Similarly, I was working with Lytle on this with the um, Aggregor gateway. We have a way to create IP, uh, IPNS so many acronyms, IPNS keys within the gateway, which might be a potential way to um, import things down the line for like clients. Um, and as well, you know, we can put data over top of an existing IPNS tree in order to add data, which includes stuff like form data or deleting files and all of that. So this is nice in that it's kind of all of the same things we can do with IPNS sorry, with IPFS, but now we can update a data set, send somebody that mutable link. Um, you know, big question here is IPNS requires private keys. How do we actually do that? I think UCANs is probably a great answer, but UCANs don't really exist for IPNS at the moment. Um, the, you know, there's thoughts about importing keys or how do we export keys if they're within a gateway? Um, these are all like questions which maybe we could talk about afterwards if people are interested. Um, so part of my work with writable gateways has been in service of custom protocol handlers in web browsers. Oh, oh shit. Where, oh my God. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, where, you know, I'm trying to think what is, how can we integrate this stuff really closely with just baseline clients, just like the raw language and kind of 
abstract away all of those extra dependencies and all of that extra knowledge that you need to run an IPFS node. And so in Aggregor, we have the existing mutable gateway functions that we extended a little bit with form data, with IPNS support. We have it all in uh, a daemon that builds off of Kubo. Source code is absolutely abysmal because we had to improve performance and kind of like hack things together to make them work on Android. But um, it kind of works. And to kind of like show where these writable gateways can be useful, we have an example markdown blogging app that we made that uses peer-to-peer -peer protocols where you can load the app from IPFS or IPNS. And then it has just like super simple, like really ugly, but you know, easy to hack together JavaScript where it just adds files to a folder for blog posts, like just markdown files. And then it publishes its latest CID to IPNS when it's ready to go public and share with the world. So I recommend reading through the code if you're OK with like janky JavaScript, but also notice that it's zero dependencies outside of the gateway that has all the dependencies. So I think that's kind of the state of writable gateways. Like there's obviously more nuance in there, but that's kind of the high level of how people interact with them and some of the reason, some of the trade-offs between the methods of interaction. Um, so I guess next we have like a discussion board. I have some potential props, prompts for stuff we can say, like are there any questions about writable gateways or like thoughts? Um, mutability I think is one that would be really important to discuss because um, applications have data changing over time. Also, like who is actually using these gateways or is it useful to people? Um, and are all, also, which of these features can we standardize on? Because like at the moment, you know, there is the Kubo gateway, but it seems there's more and more divergent implementations that maybe could work on standardizing more stuff. Um, also, is there anything that got brought up that you were like, wow, I didn't know that was an option? Um, would be cool to talk about. Here, yeah, here's my intro. <laughs> oh, also, if it's okay, I was hoping to take notes by text so we can revisit it. Thank you.